what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And you guys know we're taking this journey down Synapse and I'm an old SQL Server guy. I'm starting my journey using dedicated SQL Server pools. There's lots of different pools and we'll talk about them in subsequent videos. But what I wanna make sure I do is as I'm creating my data warehouses on my dedicated SQL Server pool, am I following the best practices? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to stay tuned. find this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. Best practices for Synapse dedicated SQL Server pools. I'm out here creating my data warehouse using Synapse and I need to make sure that I'm following all the best practices. Am I distributing the data across the nodes properly? Am I updating my statistics? Am I following all these best practices? But what if I don't know all the best practices? What if I'm just getting started? How do I find out? Well, my friend Sanjay, who works on the Power BI CAT team, has created a beautiful Power BI report that actually taps into the metadata of that database, your Synapse Data Warehouse, and it'll provide you with some insight in, as to whether or not you're using these best practices. So you guys know I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. The first thing you wanna do is head over to this Git repo and you can see there's Sanjay right there and download the Synapse Analyzer. So you download this PBIT file. Once you download the PBIT file, when you open it up, you'll get this prompt to enter your dedicated SQL endpoint. You can see it says, go to the overview page to get this information. So it'll look something like this. You'll need to get this and then enter the database name and then you click load. When you click load, it's actually running some queries to pull all this data into Power BI. And if you go look into the query editor, you'll actually see the queries that they're running. And so once it finishes, you'll land on something that looks like this. So at first glance, I can see I have three issues with some tables in my data warehouse. 14.3% to be precise of my tables have issues. There's a beautiful tree map here that tells me what those issues are. And we'll come back to this in a little bit. Over here, there's some charts that talk about some row groups being trimmed and some trim reasons. And so this is really important. If you see a category like memory limitation, if you see that bubble up to the top, you should be really concerned because that means you need to find ways to reduce your memory, your memory requirements, like limiting the number of columns in a table, removing strings from your table, minimizing the number of partitions. If you see that memory limitation come up, there can be a challenge when it's doing, when Synapse is doing some compression of your data. Okay. So be careful with that. On to the fun stuff though, the stuff that I really care about, not that this stuff isn't important. What this is really showing me is some of the tables that have issues. So I can see I have a couple of issues here and down here on this table, it tells me the particular tables that have those problems. What I really like about this table is Sanjay put a link. So if I click this link, it provides guidance on how to create replicated tables. If I click another one about missing statistics, it provides all the details for me. And so I can see that three of my tables have issues. This fact online sales, it's replicated. It's a large replicated table. This table has missing stats. This table is another large replicated table. But if I really want to see the details, I can right click right here, choose drill through and go to table detail. Now I have this little scorecard at the top that tells me, Hey, you got a large replicated table. This little red indicator is telling me there is a problem. If I go over here to the table attributes, this is a big table, 3.7 gigs with 215 million rows. I can see why this is a problem. This chart represents the 60 nodes. And you can see that I've replicated that data across those 60 nodes. That's not a good thing. When you're creating your tables in Synapse, there's an option when you create that table that you can specify what type of distribution you're using. And for this particular table, one of my developers said replicated across all the nodes. Not a good idea. Okay. Not a very good idea. We need to minimize that. We need to come up with a better distribution. One of my developers decided we need a date table. Let's run that script. So boom, it creates a date table. I'll come over here and I'll click refresh and it's going to pull all that data back and now I have four issues because that table that they created has way too many partitions, but there's also missing and outdated statistics. If you go back and look at that script, you can even look how I created that script. So I created the table, I created a partition from 2007 to 2024, and I replicated that across every node. This is a rather small table. The replication is okay, but the partition is not the best. And I wrote some scripts up that's gonna issue a fix. This script will act is actually 
actually going to convert that table. It's still going to use the same distribution to replicate it. But instead of all those partitions, it's going to eliminate all those partitions. Then I'm going to rename the existing table to old and then the new one, the one that I'm creating, I'm going to rename it to what it is. And then you can see I'm going to update some statistics. So I'm going to go ahead and run this script. So it's running. Everything's well. And then I'm going to hit back over here and refresh this and you'll see that I've addressed some of those issues only one table and I have three issues and I'm not quite sure about this one and I need to go talk to the developers and then we'll, we'll get that one fixed so you see how you can use this particular report to identify that you're not using some best practices and quickly resolve it but you may be thinking Patrick so you're telling me you want me to keep this Power BI desktop open and refresh this and refresh this absolutely not that's the beauty about the synergy between Synapse and Power BI I I can deploy this report. Wait, 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 wait. Let me show you. So I'll deploy this report out to the service and then I'll head over to the service. And when the report is deployed, I'll create a dashboard. On that dashboard, what I do is I configure an alert. And what I say is anytime tables with issues are above zero, anytime I have an issue, give me an alert. And you can see these little bells right here with the notifications is let me know, hey man, you got an issue here. And so if I click right here, it's saying, hey, there's an issue. But the cool thing about this is it sent me an email instead of me reactively waiting for someone that you know for me to go run this report I have this report deployed I've scheduled a refresh I set up my alert and so anytime there's some issues with it it's gonna let me know in my inbox if somebody's doing some development and they're not following the best practices guess who's gonna know this guy all right what do you guys think you got any questions you got any comments have you seen this best practice analyzer I hadn't until Sanjay showed me thank you so much Sanjay if you got any questions you got any comments you know what to do post it in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, you know, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.